and welcome to the second episode of the All Report and also welcome back to those who tuned in last week for the launch. I'm Katie Gordon, the Associate Editor of The Assay Magazine. It's a pleasure to be able to connect with any new and old viewers of The Assay. Again, what is The All Report? Well, it's a series concerned with all things metals and mining. The announcements speak your interest from both the majors and of course the multi one style of the juniors. If you're watching this and you want to contact us regarding any of the company announcements, we will add some contact information at the end of this video. So to kick things off, we're going to be talking about deep sea mining, which is in a lot of conversations nowadays. It's hitting many, many, many headlines. However, this time it's a positive with our favorite deep sea mining company, the Metals Company, achieving a breakthrough commercial scale processing of polymetallic nodules. What are these nodules, you ask? Well, you probably guessed it. Deep sea mining involves the extraction of minerals from the seabed of the deep sea. These minerals are called polymetallic nodules, and as Gerard Barron would explain, they are what some believe to be the key to the green energy transition, containing critical minerals such as nickel, copper, manganese, cobalt, and molybdenum. Norway recently passed a bill that will allow deep sea mining off its continental shelf in the Arctic Ocean, with lawmakers voting 80 to 20 in favour of the bill, which was a big win and it will open up around 280,000 square kilometres of the seabed to exploration. Did you know that if the cement industry were a country, it would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases? Some of the super strategic minerals and permacasts are trying to combat with their geopolymer green concrete to make Suvo our first contender for the juniors to watch. Executive Chairman Aaron Banks and CEO of SJB partner Darren Headley been hard at work creating a green concrete which aims to offer a lower carbon alternative to traditional concrete, which is second to only water as one of the most consumed resources on the planet. Suvo also did an assay interview with us recently, so if you want to learn more about that, please click the link on the screen. Moving on over to Loxley Resources, whose shares skyrocketed by 45% after the announcement of rock chip sample results from exploration work done at the company's flagship Mojave project, which shows several high antimony grades, including 211.2%. Lastly, we have Battery Age Minerals, who reported promising results on its 2024 drill campaign at the Falcon Lake Lithium Project in Ontario. The initial assay shows spodumene bearing pegmatites up to 40 meters thick and the expanded strike length at Falcon East. As we all know, net zero targets and low carbon strategies have entered almost every country in the world, but that has stopped China from ramping up its coal production. The mega country continues to remain off track on almost all key climate commitments. Particularly now, it's developing enough new mines to produce 1.28 billion tonnes of coal a year. This was reported by the Global Energy Monitor. China's existing mines are responsible for 70% of the global coal mine methane emissions. And if all the proposed projects are completed, this would then rise to 